the Skimp Beginner's Guide is designed as a follow-on from the Select Tools Guide. It's for absolute GIMP beginners and in it we'll look at changing the colours, the bucket fill tool and the blend tool. So open GIMP and hover over the colour indicator tool which is underneath the other tools. Now the top square shows you the foreground colour and the underneath square shows the background colour. So if we open a canvas, click on File, click on New, we'll accept the default size, click OK, this canvas has opened white. It has opened white because GIMP's default background colour is white. And right now, if we use the paintbrush tool, or the bucket fill, or the pencil, they will be black. And I'll do that. That is because GIMP's foreground default colour is black. Now we can change them very easily. To change the foreground colour, click on the foreground square, come down and click on the colour palette you'd like from this vertical stripe, then click on the shade you'd like and click OK. And you'll see it has now changed and now if I paint on there I have the new foreground colour. I can change the background colour the same way, click on the background square, from the vertical stripe choose the palette I'd like, then click on the shade I'd like and click OK. If I'd like to swap them around so that the purple becomes the foreground colour, all I have to do is click on this double headed arrow and they'll swap. The purple is now the foreground colour and I can paint with it. And if I'd like to send them back to the default colours, which was the black and white, I simply click on this icon here and they become black and white again. I'll close that without saving. So let's look at the bucket fill tool. First we'll create a new canvas. Click on File, New and accept the default size. Click OK. Now the bucket fill tool can fill a whole canvas or image with a colour or pattern or if you like it can just fill a selected part of the canvas or image. So first click on the bucket fill tool which looks like a bucket spilling paint. And underneath the tools you'll see you've got tool options. These ones here where it says fill type, you'll see the default is foreground colour fill. You could, if you like, click on background colour fill and later on we'll look at the pattern. Down here it says fill hole selection. Click on that. And if you can't see this, check that you haven't got a slider or roll it with your mouse wheel. Because sometimes it's just out of sight. So, you've clicked on your bucket fill tool. Now if you click on your page or your canvas, it will fill with your foreground colour because that's what you have selected here. Um, change the foreground colour, simply click on the square, come down, click on the colour palette you'd like, then click on the shade you'd like, click OK and you'll see it's changed. And now if you click on your canvas, it will be the new foreground colour. You could click on 
background colour fill and it will now fill with the background colour. You can also fill a selected area. So if you use one of your select tools, for example this one here is the free select tool, if you click on it, create a selection on your page Go back and reselect the bucket fill tool. Now in this case I'll fill it with my foreground colour so you can see it. So I have to also reselect the foreground colour fill. Click within the selection and it's filled with the foreground colour. I now have to deselect it to stop the marching ants. So I'll click on Select, come down and click on None. Now I could also fill it with a pattern. So click on Pattern Fill and then click on your canvas. And your canvas is filled with the default pattern which is Pine. You can change the pattern by clicking on the little picture of it here and you get this menu and if you see a pattern there for example I'll click here well, it's called Qbert okay and now click on the canvas and the new pattern appeared again you could select an area if I select the rectangle and I drag out rectangular selection I must reselect the bucket fill tool again and I'll change the pattern to lightning. I'll now click inside that rectangular selection and there's the new pattern. I will deselect that rectangular selection so click on select and none and that stopped the marching ants. So that's a brief look at the bucket fill tool. If you want to keep this as a photo, possibly to use as a desktop background or something, you could click on File, come down, click on Export, give it a name, I'll call it Bucket Fill, It's going to be saved as a PNG, so that's fine. Um, that's an image file. I don't want it saved to my documents. I'd like to save it to my pictures. So I come down here and I click on Pictures. And you'll see that's now changed to Pictures. I click on Export. I click on Export again. And I now have a copy of this in my pictures. I will close it and I'll close it without saving. And I will return that to black and white and I will return that to colour fill. So that was a brief look at the bucket fill tool. Here we're going to briefly look at the Blend tool. Now the Blend tool has many amazing artistic options but we're not really going to look at those because this is just a beginner's guide. We're just going to make some simple blends that are suitable for photo backgrounds, um, your desktop, etc. So create a new canvas, click on File, a new, OK. Now the blend tool is square and one side it's a dark black and it fades out on the other side to near white. So click on it and we'll change the colours. We'll click on the foreground colour. Click in the colour palette to choose a colour and then click to choose the shade. Click OK. And do the same thing with the background one. Go for yellow.
put your cursor at one end of your canvas, hold it down, take it to the other side of the canvas, and you'll see that it has blended the foreground to the background. And because you did a long drag, it's a long blend. Now, if you do a short drag, it'll be a short, sharp blend. So I've got my left mouse button down now, and I'm going to drag it to there, let it go, and you see it's a very short, sharp blend. And which way you drag will determine which way it blends. So if you go from one corner to the other, that's the way the blend will go. You can also blend in a selected area. Simply use one of the selection tools. In this case, I've clicked on the ellipse tool. Create the area on your canvas. It would pay to change the colors, I suppose. So change the foreground color. Um, I'll change that to a purple. Click on it, click OK, and I'll change the background to a orange, and click OK. And now, I have to reselect my blend tool, and drag across the ellipse, and you'll see that the blend now occurs only in the selected area. I will go select none to deselect the area and get rid of the marching ants. Now besides just that normal default linear blend, you can also do what's called a radial blend. So come down to shape and there you have linear, but if you come across, click on the drop down arrow and you will now have a menu of other types of blend. Click on radial. Put your cursor on the canvas, anywhere, it doesn't matter. Hold it down and drag it a little bit. Let it go and you'll see you now have a radial blend. If you do a long drag as before, you'll get a big radial blend. If you do a short one, you'll get a very small blend. Go back to shape and click on that drop down arrow again. And the other one that's really interesting is Spiral. Click on that, put your cursor on the page, and drag it out. And that is the Spiral Blend. And again, the shorter you do it, the shorter the blend area, which makes it a very tight spiral. The longer you drag, the, the bigger the, grip, the blend area, the bigger the spiral. And you can also, if you like, select an area on there. Um, you'd have to click on the blend tool again to reselect it. And drag out a spiral within a spiral. The choices are virtually limitless what you can do with this tool, so I hope you have some fun playing with them.